I'd like to show you how to set up the optimization for a liquid cool heat sink, which is a classic application and it also uh, shares a lot of commonalities uh, with other um, thermal and fluid management devices. In general, when you want to start new, you will simply need to click on here, create a new project, give it a name, and you're good to go. In this case, just to save some time, is what the, the, the page inside the project looks like. So as you can see, we have a split between uh, an upper section, which includes domains, and a lower section, which includes the toolboxes. Um, if I had to explain what a domain is, is what we call the computational domain. So the computational domain is effectively the space the designer or the engineer is providing into the software to create the virtual environment inside which the software can operate, Toffee can operate. In fact, the computational space is describing both the physical space inside which the physics of the problem can be solved, but it's also uh, a set, let's say, the, the space inside which the software can build a design. As you can see here, I have two different domains and I have two different toolboxes. Uh, if I click on the domain, you will see that fundamentally what you need to provide as an input is a very simple shape. In this case, we are providing the um, outline of a liquid core heatsink, so how it would look like. So what we have here is a very simple shape. So the domain that we have uploaded is fundamentally uh, a triangulated file of mesh. So the input that typically needs to be provided into the software is an STL file, which can be exported out of any CAD systems nowadays. Um, here we can see it's a very small geometry. So we're talking about uh, less smaller than five centimeters uh, per side. So it's a very small uh, liquid cold heat sink to cool down a CPU. Uh, what we identified here are a few basic regions of a few basic surfaces that will be used to set up the physics simulation problem. As I was mentioning before, the software is physics driven, so we need to describe the physics to tell the software uh, how the part is uh, behaving, how it's performing, and to inform the optimization process to go in the right direction. In this case, what we had to do was to define an inlet region that you can see here um, over in, you can see uh, the surface being highlighted, an outlet region on the other side, and then fundamentally, we also specify the region from uh, which the heat is applied. In this case, the power coming from a CPU. Once we have defined our domain, uh, we go back to our project page. And what we have to do is to build a toolbox. So a toolbox is uh, what I will define as the, the main operational environment within the platform. It's containing all the tools that you need to perform um, either simulations or design optimization. To start, it's very simple. You click on create a new toolbox. You can give it a name. So let's give it deep dive toolbox, for example. Uh, and you select the domain that you want to use to run this design optimization. Here you have some physics model that you can select. So for example, in this case, we will be solving both a thermal and a fluid problem. So you can select uh, exactly thermal fluid and click on create. Uh, fundamentally, what you have to do is to uh, create one run, which is a design run in our case, because we are expecting the software to output a design at the end of this process. Classic things, we can give it a name, we can set up um, settings for both design, simulation, and mesh. Uh, because again, uh, I'll say it again, the software is simulation driven, so we need an underlying physics simulation to inform our optimization process. Um, once you click on create, you, um, we see that here on the sidebar, you have the option to fill in the run details, so all the parameters that you need to input to start the optimization process, and this will, um, at the end, once everything is set up, you will be able to perform an optimization. So, just very quickly, uh, I would like to show you how this works. So, first of all, let's start with the mesh settings. It's the easiest one. Here we have to discretize our domain, uh, so give it either a number of cells or by a maximum cell size. In this case, let's keep it to default, so just to keep it um, with the basic settings. Uh, under simulations is where we define our CFD. Here is where we are uh, specifying all the conditions that describe the, the physics we are trying to solve. So first of all, for example, we want to tell the software what is the fluid being using, uh, used in this case. So what is the coolant um, that we're using? As you can see, we have a list of predefined materials or predefined fluids as well. In this case, just to again, uh, speed up is set up. We will uh, select water as a process and click on update. Um, for the boundary conditions, what we have to do is to define um, the, the boundaries for the problem. So, of course, we want to start by defining an inlet. Here it's very simple. So we can go 
uh, define the boundary, specify what is the, the, the velocity of the fluid going inside our domain, what is the temperature of the fluid going inside the domain. And then once we have identified the touch, we can click on create. This policy was what we follow also for the other boundaries. So in this case, we will define um, a pressure outlet. So simply identify the boundary. Then we said that we are providing some heat. So we want to pull down this geometry. So what um, is the, the power we want to input? In this case, actually, I'm going to do something slightly different. So instead of providing a, a heat flux, as you can see here, you have the option to apply heat flux. Um, I will fix the value of the uh, bottom surface that identified before as it, you can see here at a uh, um, uh, quite high value. So uh, the reason is that this could be, for example, let's say 30, 40, uh, Kel 340 Kelvin to uh, symbolize, for example, the maximum temperature that the CPU can withstand. So I might be optimizing in the worst condition possible. And then I can run the validations to see also how um, this behaving also for uh, different um, working conditions. So this is one approach that you can follow. Uh, the software is giving me this icon, so it's telling me that I still need to input a few more constraints, a few more boundaries. Uh, in this case, what it's asking me is to define the boundaries for the remaining surfaces on my domain. In this case, I will just use an adiabatic condition. So uh, I'm um, making sure that the only heat transfer is happening behind, uh, be between the system, the, the heat provided into the system and the coolant uh, that I've defined using the inlet here as a boundary. Uh, then we come to probably the most interesting part of the optimization. So here is where we define the settings for our design. Uh, as you can see, we have, again, uh, a few uh, parameters we have to always input for the software to successfully run a design. The first one is the material. In this case, we will be selecting a default aluminum and click on update. Um, and then on the objective is where we define how the um, optimization should be carried out. In this case, as we, we were mentioning, um, Toffee is a software to maximize the fluid and thermal efficiency of a device. So what we want to combine is something which is minimizing the pressure drops. So we want to minimize how much uh, energy we need to pump the fluid through the system, but also at the same time to maximize the transfer. These two objectives are in contrast. In contrast. So if you minimize pressure drops, you also um, uh, the, 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 the more you minimize pressure losses, the, the, the lower you can maximize the transfer and vice versa. So in this case, just to give a, a reference starting value, we will give uh, two weights to pressure losses and the transfer. So we are telling the software that we want to maximize the transfer. I give it a weight of 500, which is telling the software we want to give a higher priority on a transfer in this case um, with this optimization. As you can see, that's why we have these design uh, and manufacturing constraints sections. Mainly, we are splitting them in between additive constraints or uh, machining. So we have these two policies for now, but we are adding more and more uh, moving forward. Just to give an example, uh, for the additive process, we can define, for example, uh, minimum feature size. So we know that additive manufacturing process have resolution, so we don't want to get too small. Um, that might be uh, not printable, or maybe you know that maybe when the thickness of a design, if we think about it, exchangers, when you have a too small thickness, maybe this would be a bit too porous. So you might have um, the fluid going from one side to the other, something that we, we want to avoid. So this is something a feature we can control. We can define uh, just by uh, enabling this control, what is the minimum feature that is allowable um, as a result in the final design. Similar thing we have for the channel clearance. So we know the powdering is something quite critical for 3D printing. And of course, overhang uh, is probably the, the, the main thing. So we want to be able to specify a direction. So in this case, for example, we could identify a build direction going to the, the direction of uh, the negative Z axis. So we could say zero, zero, minus one, identify um, the bottom region, which is the one that is supported. And then we could specify, for example, um, a minimum or a maximum overhang angle so we know that at the end of this optimization process, the software will be not overhanging um, above the value we specify. On the other side, we have uh, machining constraints. So for example, we can identify a milling direction. And in this case, again, you can provide an axis to specify how the milling will be removing material from the block of, of um, solid that you are providing. Once everything is set up, you have a few additional things you can set up into the configuration, but very simple. You um, go here, you click on this icon, and you can select the computational power you want to allocate for the software to run the setup and to run the, um, the optimization. Uh, in the menu, you have here a few options, like select, for example, eight CPUs. Again, these CPUs are not local, are not 
something you have to own. Um, everything is happening in the cloud. We are host on uh, Amazon Web Services. And once you click launch, the software will give you this um, menu telling you that it's running, good sign. And then it's going through the different stages of meshing, running the first uh, simulation to initialize the problem. And then we start a design phase. So you can also keep track and follow. Now, as you can see, it was very quick to set up an optimization. So we only had to specify and provide a design uh, space, in this case, just the, the shape, the, the overall shape of the, um, the space we are available for the liquid cold heat sink. We had to go through the setup of mesh simulation and design settings. But what we are getting here as a result is a single design. Uh, typically, what we want to do in this phase when we are exploring the possibility we can get with OffX, the best thing is to explore a variety of different settings and parameters. This is very quick and very fast to do in OffX. So, for example, here I have set up my mesh and simulation, and I'm happy with them. Uh, so I know that the, the simulation parameters will stay the same throughout the, um, the different design stages, and that's because these are my conditions. And I'm happy with the mesh resolution. What I want to change is, for example, um, the design settings. So I want to test what if I use a different overhang angle? What if I use a different minimum feature size? What if I use, um, instead of additive, I go for manufacturing with traditional tools, so I go with machining? What if I use less or more material. What if I use different materials? So how can we quickly explore this uh, broader design space? How can we, instead of making incremental improvements, start by generating a lot of designs and then on the one that we like the more, keeping on iterating just to get to a, a better optimum. It's very simple. What we have to do is to simply create a new run. In this case, again, a design. As you can see, the software in this case will give us the option to select and reuse pre-existing settings. In this case, we will be happy to reuse simulation and mesh settings while we want to change and duplicate uh, design settings for the design itself. In this case, I will click on create and the software will give me a new design. And as you can see, I won't be able to modify mesh and simulation parameters, they're fixed. So what I can do here is instead to change um, the output that I can get using uh, different design parameters. In this case, for example, let's put as of the overhang constraint and let's instead enable the milling constraint. In this case, I want the software to uh, remove material in this direction. So uh, I have to identify 001 axis direction. So removing material from top to bottom and click on update. Very simple. I change one parameter. I go on the uh, open fan icon again and click launch. So as you can see, the mesh before um, was completed. So the software is reusing the mesh settings. Unfortunately, the simulation wasn't done yet. Even if the software is very fast, uh, it's not like <laughs> a three seconds simulation. Um, but then it's reusing the same settings to perform a new design. So here you can see how it's very quick and easy to explore a design space by quickly changing one parameter and getting to a new design solution. Uh, of course, I have already run some of this design, so uh, I want to show you the results of it. Uh, but here we have two examples. So one is the maximization of the transfer um, with, without, say, without any constraints applied. So you can see this is the structure of the software is giving us an output. So this was the starting point we had, similarly to what we've done so far. Uh, if I go in wireframe, frame, you will see that this is the internal structure the software is building. And you can also visualize the, the fluid region. So you can see uh, how the software is um, splitting, let's say the fluid coming from the inlet to the bottom of this uh, bottom region where the heat is applied to maximize the, the heat transfer and to cool down as efficiently as possible the structure. The result I'm showing you is without any constraints on manufacturing, so kind of giving 3D freedom to the software. But if we look instead at the design that we got by milling, we can see for the same parameters, so same ratio of uh, pressure losses with um, heat transfer, we can see that we have a completely different design. So in this case, the software is carving out material from a block of solid and giving us a result, which is at this point manufacturable by, by Um I would like to actually share this very quickly, uh, these results in um, uh, Paraview, which is a post-processing tool we typically use. Here we have a comparison of these three different designs. On the extreme right, we see the baseline design. So what was done uh, previously, what we a good design by just using our uh, invention and our ingenuity. So in this case is a classic uh, M-shaped channel to go down the CPU at the bottom. In the middle, we see the structure that is being optimized uh, with a kind of unconstrained approach. So without uh, adding 
any manufacturing constraints into consideration. And here instead on the left hand side, we are uh, including the manufacturing constraints of milling. So you can see the streamlines, uh, how the fluid is moving into the different structures. And also we can have a look at how this uh, behaves. So if we um, visualize the temperature at the bottom of each of these devices, so here, for example, you can see that we have um, a maximum temperature of 311 Kelvin. If we go to the um, optimized region, which is a slightly more unconstrained, uh, we might be expecting a slightly lower temperature. So you can see from the legend, uh, slightly lower. And if I rescale on those values, we see roughly one degree is colder. And finally, we have the serpentine design. Uh, again, let's plug the temperature uh, for this one. Let's rescale. And you see 314, quite not uniform uh, distribution for temperature. So we can see how uh, effectively the software is giving a design which is optimized, which is behaving uh, better on uh, the heat dissipation. But also if we have a look at the values for pressure, we will see that we also have um, a kind of same pattern where we have, for example, for pressure, we have uh, a value of almost 2000 Pascal. This is small device, just to, to remind you. Um, in the IAM case, we have a um, value of, oh, sorry, a value of uh, lower uh, 243 and similar value we are expecting also for the, the mid geometry. So yeah, this was a pretty quick overview, but it's showing you the difference in uh, the designs that you can get in TOFIX very quickly by only changing a few parameters. You can tap into a very vast uh, design space, so you can pick up several alternatives. So you are not limited into a design cycle which is incrementally improving on something that was either pre-existing or into something that you had to come up uh, from scratch, and then you had to run a lot of validations. So. To, to see what was working, what was not, and then to slightly improve and modify until you reach a convergence to satisfy the, the requirements. So this saves a lot of time. So in a few hours, uh, if I go back to the software, you will see this design is taking roughly one hour uh, for the set of parameters we selected. So it's really quick to get to different designs, different shapes, um, and then based on the results you get, it's a first in iteration. You can also refine until you reach to a convergence where you are satisfied with all the results uh, that, you, that you're getting at the end of the process. And of course, this is uh, done not anymore uh, in months, but it's taking just a few weeks. So we have testimonials from customers going from the conceptual design to actually manufacturing a design in two weeks. So uh, it's, it's really powerful. And we probably believe that it is a great tool to start integrating into the design workflow.